Yeah, it kills everybody because they will continue on with a game called Return to Share Nagaso Island. Where were we? Here we are. Eek, that was a terrifying story. My trauma level just went through the roof. I'll be okay. I have a classical Japanese mirror at home. I should be fine, probably. Hmm. That's totally messed up. What shape was the mirror? What color? Any specific details? Huh? Didn't I tell you? The mirror was covered by a piece of cloth, so I don't know what shape or color it was. I don't even know if the part of the television crew is true or not. I just heard about it. It could be any kind of mirror. It could have been a classical Japanese mirror. I hope that the mirrors inside your homes aren't cursed. Eek, please, don't torment me. Anyway, that was my scary story. I have to admit, it scared me as well. Ever since I heard it, I've been too afraid to even look into mirrors. Would you happen to know of a way to deal with such a fear? Seriously, so you're scaring yourself? Why would you do that? Deal with your mirror trauma yourself. I was starting to regret telling you about it. Uh, what should I do? So you're scaring yourself. There's no need to traumatize me as well. <laughs> Cuff. Eek, don't scare me like that. Hey, I only cough. No need to overreact. Um, I'm going to take a piss. Time to drain the lizard. W way too much information, Ikeda. Yeah, some things are better left unsaid, Ikeda. Look who's talking. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this feels good. Perhaps I drank beer a bit too much yesterday. I wonder if there's still some bottles left. Huh? What's that? Looks like a mirror is washed onto the beach. A mirror, huh? Now that's pure serendipity. <laughs> what the fuck? What a coincidence. Amazing timing. It must have come from the nearby town. What should I do with it? If I just leave it here, the girls might realize that there's a town nearby. I should dispose of it. But if I bring this mirror back to them, they'll probably pee themselves. Seeing their terrified faces would be pretty entertaining. It was floating in the sea, but I don't see any signs of damage. No cracks or stains. Just a regular mirror. Pretty solid. Not that it matters. Alright, what should I do with the mirror? Uh, save here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bring the mirror back to the girls. I bet they'll be ecstatic if I bring it back with me. Wow, you found a mirror. Alex's story was about mirrors. What a coincidence. We should hang it inside the hut. Something like that. <laughs> I'm back. Hey, guess what I found on the beach? Something interesting? Are you hiding it behind your back? Why don't I like this at all? Did you find something on the beach? At least there's no chance in hell it was a mirror. I wonder what it is. What did you find? Just so you know, I'll never forgive you for going to scare us. I wasn't expecting anything else from you, Akira. Well, I found a mirror that had washed ashore, so I brought it with me. Ikeda, please don't make such jokes. There's no way a mirror would suddenly wash ashore on this island. Ikeda, your dad jokes aren't funny at all. Yeesh. What she says, stop freaking us out. No, I wasn't joking. A mirror really washed ashore. Check this out. What? Eek. Ta-da. I know, I know. What a surprise. No need to cheer so loudly. <laughs> Pretty cool find, right? Stay away from us, you monster. Stay away. Ah, ah. Eek. Help, help. Stay away. Huh? What's this all of a sudden? I only brought you girls a nice mirror. What's with all the screaming? Ikeda, you idiot. There's something inside the mirror. There's a monster inside it. It had a quick throw it away far from here. Do it now. Is there something inside the mirror? Uh oh, jump scare incoming. Hey, I can see a creature with a pale skin in it. <laughs> hey, I can see a creature with pale skin inside it. I don't think it's painted it onto the mirror. Strange, it gnarls whenever I look at it. It had a what are you doing? Drop that mirror right now. Drop it. Ugh. 
I'm trying to, but I can't seem to lose my grip. We're done for. Game over. Game over, man. It will curse and slaughter us one by one. I'm so sorry. If only I hadn't told you the story about the mirror. This never would have happened. It's a cursed mirror. Help. This can't be real. It's impossible. Please, I want to wake up. Mama. A pale hand darts out of the mirror and grabs my wrist. Although it's blur, I can feel this incredible strength. Blood is dripping from my wrist. No. No. <laughs> Ikeda, what are you laughing at? Ikeda has lost his mind. He must have snapped. <laughs> All you want to play have huh? fine by me, you miser. You do have some guts challenging me like that. I'll show you what I'm made of. Yeah. Uh, well, what happened? So did we headbutt the thing? Holding the mirror with both hands, I smash it into a thousand pieces on my knee. Oh. I quickly toss the broken mirror into the campfire. I can hear the agonizing scream of a monster in the campfire. You messed with the wrong person, you mirror monster. A childhood friend of mine became a monk when he grew up. I bet you didn't know that. Hasta la vista, baby. What? What? What just happened? Did you defeat that monster? But what does the fact that your friend became a monk have anything to do with you? <laughs> uh, anyway, I saved us. We're safe, right? Wait, what? What do you mean Alex says that? Why would Alex say that? Did, she didn't do shit. We're safe, right? We... Exercising a ghost is usually impossible. It's a good thing you're friends with a monk. What is that to do? <laughs> what is that anything to do with Ikeda? I know several priests, but I don't go around just exercising demons. Anyway, I was pretty scared. Yeah, well, the monster really was quite strong. Telling scary stories can attract monsters, you know. Have you experienced this before? I didn't realize that. Nope, first time monster hunter here. Well, if we don't count Shironagaso Island. <laughs> Anyway, let's go to your storytelling session. Neniko, you're next, right? What? Me? After everything that happened? No way. What is wrong with you, Ikeda? Are you crazy? Please don't scare me like that. I'll definitely die of fright the next time. Listen to me. If we stop telling scary stories now, scary things will actually happen. We have to continue telling our stories. It is known. My childhood friend who became a monk told me so. You don't want things to become any worse, do you? You're lying. You're, you're lying. You're making this up. <laughs> okay, okay. I know a scary story. It's a classic. But like I said, I really don't like scary stories. Ugh. Well, tell it already. Who could have known that this would happen? <laughs> what? We have to keep telling scary stories? <laughs> All right, Nanako. Tell us a scary story. Make it really scary. I somehow have the feeling that Ikeda is enjoying seeing us scared. Too much thinking. Not enough scary stories. This is for your own good. Go ahead, Neniko. I really don't want to do this, but... Ugh. Have you ever heard about brains in vats? You just brought back some rather nasty memories. Was it a huge brain in the basement on that island? Does this have anything to do with that? No, this has nothing to do with that. Actually, it might have something to do with that, but what if we're actually still on Shiranagazu Island with our brains hooked up to our computer and all of this is just a simulation? Yeah, that sounds familiar. What are you talking about? It's obvious that this is reality. It's not that scary, is it? Akira, you're really stupid. What? <laughs> my head, my head. And why are you calling me stupid? Out with it. On the island, I was hooked up to a computer, and the virtual world was practically indistinguishable from reality. That's why I'm more scared about being a brain in a vat than the rest of you. You understand, don't you? Oh, that's right. It's true that Nanako was connected to that computer. It's not strange that she's particularly scared. Ikeda? Are you sure you're sane? In the membrane? Is your head empty and is your brain already floating in a vat? Grr. 
What? My head! My head! <laughs> Why do you have to denigrate me all the time? You're saying that as if you don't know what it's like. You were hooked up to it as well, so you should also be afraid of being a brain in a van. Ah, you're right. I'd completely forgotten about that. Did you really forget about that? I bet your head muscles are bigger than your brain, because you're such a meathead, like a sea urchin. Knock knock, is anyone there? No, looks like nobody's home. <laughs> Ouch! My head hurts even more. I have such a large brain, you'll damage it irreversibly if you do that. I said knock it off. <laughs> but even if this world is a simulation, there's no way to prove it, right? In my case, I realized I was in a simulated reality when I fired my gun at the airport because the system didn't know how to process that. Geez, that was a horrible thing to do. The system constructed a virtual world by... Virtual word? What? You mean world? By extracting visual memories from the target brain and emulating it. But if there were any major discrepancies, the system would fail. Even so, you can't make me fire a gun in an airport. It wouldn't make any sense as this world has to be real. It's much too large and complex to be a simulation. Besides, you'd be arrested for sure. In any case, if this is the real world, that means that you are thinking too much. But human memory and awareness have their own limits. For example, if you have a horrible nightmare but forget about it once you wake up, how would you know that you had it in the first place? Isn't that scary? Not being able to remember that horrible things happened in your dream? It's as if part of your memory dies. Is that similar to being put under hypnosis? Like if you have a dreadful experience, but after having been hypnotized, you can't remember it? Is this something you have first-hand experience with? It certainly sounds like that to me. But you have a photographic memory. Can you forget things? If such a thing would happen to you, wouldn't that be rather unusual? Nothing to worry about, right? That's easy for you to say. I can usually remember everything. So if I can't remember something, it really is something terrifying. I guess we all have our own problems. Uh -oh. <laughs> what? What was that? Did something just happen? What are you talking about, Nanako? Alright, it's your turn. What? It's my turn. What are you talking about? It's your turn to tell a scary story, right? Don't tell me that you have cold feet. What are you talking about? She just sent a story. There was a gust of wind and the fire went out. Suddenly, there was a really creepy scream. Huh? That didn't happen at all. There wasn't a wind this entire time and I don't think I've heard any strange voices. Are my memories different from those of everyone else? Let me ask you, Akira and Alex, what were your scary stories about? Huh? Don't you remember? I told the story about zombies crawling out of their graves. That is totally different. And I told a story about the boogeyman. Those both sound like generic creepy pasta scary stories and you didn't tell those. What's wrong with you all? Is everything alright? You're the one who's acting strangely. Why did you suddenly start freaking out? You were okay just until a minute ago. Jeesh. Ikeda, don't you remember? Akira and Alex both told totally different stories. When it was my turn to tell a scary story, something strange happened. Something strange? Ooh. I don't remember it. I don't remember. It's just like Akira is saying. This is no good. Even Ikeda has been affected. I can't trust anyone anymore. Stay away from me. Don't come any nearer. What's up with you? Have you really lost your marbles, Zeniko? Hmm, it's very unethical like for her to run into the woods like that. Could she know something that we're not aware of? Did she say that we all told totally different stories? The wind started to blow and there was an eerie scream? Well, that's not what I remember. Didn't we tell stories about zombies and... What was it again? The Boogeyman. R that's right. Huh? Did we really tell those stories? I'm trying to recall you girls telling those two stories. I'm sorry, but I don't remember you telling them. This is strange. Why is this happening? Alex, try to tell us what the story Akira told us was about. Akira's story? 
so this boy and girl had to walk because their car broke down and the boy told the girl that he loved her. The moon came out and the boy turned into a werewolf. But it really happened in the movie they were watching. After they left the cinema, the boy started singing and dancing. Something like that, right? What? That's not what I told you at all. There weren't even any zombies in my story. Yes, there were. Zombies then crawled from their graves and they all started singing and dancing. That's what you told us. Is this is thriller? <laughs> Wasn't that the music video of that famous singer? I told you something totally different. What does this mean? That Alex is a total derp? <laughs> derp. Or that what Neneko told us is true. What Neneko told us is difficult to believe, but she was probably telling us the truth. Alright, I'll go look for her right now. We'll figure out what is happening and put a stop to it after that. I'm freaking out all of a sudden. If our memories are really being rewritten, then who is doing it and why? I have to find Neneko right away. My intuition is telling me that we're in a pretty bad situation. Here we go again. Wh what? Why am I here? Didn't I leave this place and run into the forest? Let me think. After that, um... Stop saying crazy things, Neneko. It's your turn next. This is another time loop. What should I do if this keeps happening? Is there a way out of this? Itchy. Why does my belly feel itchy? Hey, what's going on with you? Are you okay? There might be something on my belly. What is it? Uh, run. Alien next uh, boat? Alien next to boat. Oh, okay. Wow. What the? Why are you taking your clothes off? And what's that? There's something written on your belly. What's wrong with you? You pervert weirdo exhibitionist. Honestly, I don't know what to say right now. No, this is not what it looks like. There's something very strange going on. Our memories are being altered and our actions are being looped. What does it say on my belly? Run, aliens next to boat? I have a really bad feeling about this. What could this mean? Seriously, my head is spinning. Would you mind covering up? If you want to expose yourself to others, maybe you should wait until we're off this island. Why are you doing that? Does it excite you? Yeesh, they're too far gone. There's nothing I can do for them. You can't at least tell me you realize that something strange is happening. Hmm. Wah. What? What are you going to do to me? Don't force yourself on me. Please be gentle. Shush, quiet. You're totally misreading me as usual. Listen, you told us that something strange is happening. Certain things have felt strange to me as well. My own memory feels really vague. At first I thought that you were acting like some kind of pervert, but you didn't have time to write anything on your belly while we were sitting there. I think you made the right decision. No matter what happens next, promise me that you won't shout, okay? Turn around and look at the campfire. Eek, what the fuck? You idiot, didn't I tell you not to shout? Keep your voice down. Mm. What is that thing? The writing on your belly mentioned aliens, so I guess that means that it really is an alien. What the hell is it doing? Looks like it's pointing some device at Akira and Alex. It emits a light that shines onto the girls. Oh, so that memory erasing thingy from Men in Black. That device is probably altering their memories. That's what's been wiping our minds. Actually, I think there was one of those devices near the campfire that activated from time to time. I wasn't completely sure until I saw this. So aliens are real. They look so eerie. Do all aliens look like that? I've never actually seen an alien before, so who knows? It looks just like some kind of weird shrimp, like An Anumalacris? Yuck, I don't know how it's pronounced. What could have made them evolve into that shape? Well, it looks like more like a... a Tar tapir? Tapir? Look carefully. There are similar shadowy figures over there. Looks like there are several of them. Oops, they spotted us. We have to get out of here. Eek, wait, I'm paralyzed by fear. Don't leave me. What? You gotta be kidding me. Why are you so high maintenance? <laughs> we managed to escape to the beach. What are we going to do now? This is a dead end. The way they moved, I don't think they react to sight or smell. They seem to be able to sense our body heat. 
It would be bad if that's the case. They'll be able to find us. I don't know what I'd do if they catch us, or maybe they already caught me before. I can't remember, and that's what really scares me. No time to be scared. Let's hide behind those rocks. If we hide there, they shouldn't be able to sense our body heat. Eek, I can hear screaming. Be quiet. Hmm. Looks like we managed to get far enough away from them. But if I were them, I wouldn't just give up so easily. What should we do next? Ah, I think they'll use their spaceship to search for us from the sky. I'm assuming they have a spaceship. I don't think they came here in a dinghy. <laughs> that sounds plausible. We should strike them first before they have the chance to do that. We should try attacking them from behind. I don't think these guys came to visit us in peace with goodwill. That would be way too dangerous. Don't forget that they're aliens. If they have a memory wiping device, they'll probably have dangerous weapons as well. Perhaps we need a low-tech solution. Some kind of booby trap. Got any ideas? The text on my bell said aliens. There was something else written next to the boat. Could that mean that there's something hidden there? Next to the boat. Does that mean that there's something hidden around here? I don't see anything though. No, wait. This island is mainly covered by forest, and there aren't any large clearings. Most of the shoreline is pretty narrow as well. If I had to land a spaceship, then maybe... I grab a handful of sand and toss it into the air. Oh. Holy fucking shit. Whoa! It's a real spaceship. Well, we don't know yet if this is really a spaceship, but it sure does look like a spaceship. I see, so this is what the text meant. Maybe you saw the spaceship before your memory was erased. So you wrote a note about it on your belly. You might be right, it really freaks me out that I can't remember that. Well, now that we've discovered a spaceship, time for some mischief. When I'm done with them, all that'll be left is shrimp salad. Don't tell me that you're really going to board it, that's too scary. I don't think you should. It'll be game over if there's an anti-intruder system. We can't just stand here and do nothing either. Now is the time to take action. Ugh, this is a new level scary. Why do these crazy things keep happening to me? I really must be a super bad luck magnet. Just stop your whining, will ya? That looks like a ramp and some kind of entrance, and they left it open. That's pretty careless of them. I guess Ellis are just as stupid as we are. Come on, let's go inside. <laughs> Scary? Jump scare, wow, alien room. Whoa, this really looks like a spaceship, because it is. Are those the controls in the middle? There's no time to waste. I'll try to find a structural part that I can sabotage. Nanako, see if you can somehow destroy the ship with the controls. What? You want me to figure out the ship's controls and then destroy the spaceship with absolutely no knowledge of how it works? That's its all order. Besides, on a spaceship, the controls are likely all automated, not manual. Even if it's fully automated, there should still be a manual system built in. Even a spaceship might sometimes break down. We could take advantage of that. Look, I've already found some sort of structural part. Those ugly. I'll make them pay for what they did to us. I wonder if this connects to the MCP. This is like an EICAS, so there's like a stick and a thrust lever. Let me see, how can I use it to crash? If I have my personal one wino with me, and the operating system of the spaceship just happened to be compatible with it, I would have been able to upload a virus. As if sabotaging a spaceship would ever be that easy. Just see what you can do to the controls. This is also pretty complex. I think you should cut some wires. That should do it. I still want to cause a bit more damage, though. Ah, I know what to do. Ah, Ikeda, where are you going? What? Don't worry. I'll be back in a jiffy. Let's find a good one. Ah, you will do very nicely, my friend. You're coming with me, mister. The hell is that? Ikeda, where did you go? Uh, what's that thing? Oh, a sea cucumber. Why? Say hello to my little friend. Organic material will mess with precision equipment. 
This little guy is full of salty water, so sparks should fly if I stick it into the internal parts of a spaceship. I would hate to be the maintenance and inspection manager of the spaceship. <laughs> oh, I finished as well. By using my knowledge of Boeing, Airbus, Varus, fighter jets, and other planes, I've managed to turn off all safety systems. It'll take more work to have it malfunction completely, though. Like I said, this isn't easy. Put simply, how can we completely wreck this thing? Well, first we want them to take off without realizing that we've messed with it. In any Airbus, the autopilot is turned off automatically when manual controls are used. I'm counting on the spaceship working in the same way, so I want the controls to work the wrong way. Making the controls malfunction is going to be difficult, but if I can get it done, the spaceship will probably crash. Either crash or explode. Allowing it to take off is easy enough, so we need to make it malfunction. I have an idea. What? Really? How can we make it malfunction without actually being on board ourselves? Is that even possible? Pretty easy. I just need to attach this fishing line to the throttle, lever to make it go full throttle. They'll probably freak out and try to pull the lever back, right? But it'll go back up, right? So they'll try to do that again, this way. We can have the others cause the malfunction themselves. That sounds terrifying, but it just might work. Alright, the throttle lever is now fixed in place. Let's get out of here before they come. Huh? Oh. I just heard the voice of an alien. This is bad, they're here. We might have to hide somewhere on the ship. What should we do? The... Um, throw something to distract it? Sure. I'll throw something to distract it. We'll then quickly run away. I wonder if that will work. Wait, come to think of it. It looks like an anomalous yeah, fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> it might it may have omnidirectional compound eyes with great dynamic visual acuity. On the other hand, it can detect slow movements. Darn that complicates things, but we don't have a choice. I approach the entrance of a spaceship and throw my pliers as low as I can onto the ground. Darn it, it noticed it, and now it's focused on that sound. We have to slip out of here now. I signal Nanako and we slowly crawl down the slope and hide behind a rock. The alien slowly disappears into the spaceship. Wait, that was the correct choice? Okay. Uh, are we safe? Shush, wait, I think there are more of them. Two more aliens follow the first one, and they also disappear into the spaceship. The door of the spaceship then closes. We did it, but that was a close call. Nanako, do you think that what we did will really destroy the spaceship? As I said earlier, I've removed everything that resembled the safety device. They'll soon take off in the spaceship and fly into the sky, right? Because all safety devices are gone, it'll suddenly launch in full throttle. Normally, it won't accelerate that quickly because of the safety devices. The maximum speed of an interstellar spacecraft is probably near the speed of light which means the ship will suddenly accelerate to that speed. However, if that happens on an atmospheric planet like Earth, there will be frictional heat and shock waves, and so the spaceship will explode. Whoa. The question is, how do we get them to lift off without them noticing my handiwork? Ikeda, what should we do? If it takes too long, they might notice what I've done. Don't worry, I've thought that far ahead. We're going to use this guy. I light the flare I took from the lifeboat and throw it onto the spaceship. Well, that actually hit? Okay. It lands nicely on the roof of the spaceship with my parabolic throw. Reacting to the flare, the spaceship starts to flutter and ascends. It appears that they've discovered us, but the spaceship moves very strangely. It looks like the sea cucumber is doing a great job in there. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. In a flash, the spaceship flies up and explodes. The sky lights up and it takes several seconds for the sound of the explosion to reach us. The impact of the explosion is so strong that we can hear it all the way down here. Huh, looks like it worked. Like messed up fireworks. I feel sorry for that sea cucumber. I'll have some sea cucumber vinegar with my next meal in its memory. I seriously hope this won't turn into a galactic diplomatic incident. <laughs> What if they were super important aliens? Whatever, they were using us as guinea pigs, and we did something about it. 
What we did was only in self-defense. They just reaped what they sowed. Anyway, that was a really strange and absurd experience. Somehow, we've managed to live through it. Let's go back to Akira and Alex. I hope they're all right. I hope they didn't kill them. What if they were mutilated like cattle, and only their skeletons are left? Don't say things like that. Uh, by the way, when we get back there, we should check for any memory-wiping devices first. Just to be on the safe side. Oh, looks like they're both all right. Those two, they're both behaving like idiots. So this is probably the memory wiping device. We should get rid of it before it causes any more trouble. I'll throw it away. Wait just a minute. This device might be useful for me. I'll take it home with me. Hey, what are you saying? You can't take something home that you don't even know how to use. That would be asking for trouble. You don't understand, Ikeda. Each day I'm suffering because I can't forget things. If I can erase the bad memories, I might be able to become happy. I can only imagine you erasing your entire mind by accident or abusing the device for malicious purposes. What are you talking about? That's nonsense. I'll be careful. I'll handle it with care. Please. Give it to me, Ikeda. Hey, you idiot, stop that. So. <laughs> Ugh. Hang on, it feels as if something very important just happened. My mind just went blank. Huh? What are you talking about? Anyway, it was Nanako's turn next, right? Me? Haven't I already told you my scary story about brains and vats? Brains and vats, huh? Does that have anything to do with... Uh... Ikeda, were you even paying attention? Did you dream while you were taking a nap? Dream it? Was I dreaming? So I guess Nanako's story is over already? I don't know why, but I'm kind of spacing out. Now that you mention it, I'm also unsure if she told it or not. So I guess it's Akira's turn last. Hurry up and tell us a scary story. Alright. Was I just thinking too much? There's something not quite right here. <laughs> Whatever, it's probably just my imagination. I don't think anything strange has happened. Probably. <laughs> huh? Why does my belly feel itchy? Whatever. Just tell us a scary story, Kara, but don't make it too scary. All right, all right. Oh, well, because you asked. I'm about to tell you one of the scariest stories ever. Let me see. Hmm. Kihei Itsu and his granddaughter, Ume, went to the Senzoji Temple in Asakusa. Isn't that the plot from the Japanese horror movie, The Ghost of Yatsuya? I want to hear something I don't already know. <laughs> um... Hmm. Every person has a dark side. That's because... Isn't that from Fear of Manju? And that's a Japanese Rakugo story, not a scary story. Come on, Ikeda. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Grr. <laughs> you can't do that. So unfair. Calm down already. Do you know existing Japanese scary stories, Ikeda? Neriko knows all of those already. Boring. We've all been talking about our traumas. Ikeda's the only one telling stories that already exist. Is that a ship? Huh? What's that? A horn. A foghorn. There's a ship nearby. That's wonderful. Let's go to the shoreline and ask them to save us. Darn! Are people from the town out fishing? But if the girls find out the truth, it would spoil all the fun. Wait, everyone. Don't move. It's a trap. What are you talking about, Ikeda? It's the far garden of a ship. We need to go there so they can rescue us. No, this sound is different. It's not a good sound. It's a terrifying sound. Now is the perfect time to tell you my story. You see, I was expecting to hear that sound. Because it is what my story is about. What, what do you mean, Ikeda? Think carefully. What did that fog horn sound like? It wasn't the fog horn of a big ship. It sounded higher in pitch, right? More like the whistle of a small boat. Isn't that strange? What are you talking about? What's so strange about that? Don't forget that we're on a desert island in the middle of the ocean. Small boats can't come all the way here. So why did we hear such a small whistle? You've experienced many strange things, so you should realize when something isn't quite right. Are you saying that this is a ghost? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. 
Let me tell you my story. <laughs> what a jackass. An old friend told me this story. My friend is a fisherman. One day, fisherman followed some skipjack tuna into the deep ocean when the engine of his boat died. For some reason, the radio couldn't find any signal, so their ship just drifted about. Shit. After he drifted for several days, he finally found an island. None of the fishermen even knew about this island. It was a solitary island in an area where. Area where? Area where what? <laughs> it kind of finished there, the sentence. They managed to berth at the island and decided to wait there for help. Fortunately, they had plenty of food and water, so they waited there. They figured that help would come eventually. And indeed, after some time, something did come. What came? That day, a thick fog covered the island. Uh oh, shit, shit. I have to edit here, fellas. I have to prepare for work. Oh my god. So, I've noticed that there are other choices that I haven't chosen yet, and we're gonna go back for that after we're done with this one uh, long playthrough. <laughs> so, yeah. This is Return to Shiro Nagaso Island. If you want to try the game for yourselves, the links are in the description down as all for today. Stay safe and take care of yourselves.